Good evening. You are watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. First, the headlines. The Chief Executive Officer of Oman Airports is elected as Vice President of the World Airports Council. The first joint meeting of Arab Water and Agriculture Ministers in Cairo reviews the future strategy to achieve food and water security in Arab countries. And the US Secretary of State warns of devastating consequences of unilateral Turkish military action in northeast Syria. Those were the headlines. Now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos sent a cable of condolences to His Majesty King Hamad bin Issa Al Khalifa of the Kingdom of Bahrain on the death of Her Highness Sheikh Aisha bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The General Assembly of the World Council of Airports at its 59th meeting in Hong Kong unanimously voted to elect Ayman bin Ahmed Al Hassani, Chief Executive Officer of Oman Airports, as Vice President of the World Airports Council for a period of two years in recognition of his valuable contributions and achievements in the development of airport performance in the Sultanate at administrative, operational and financial levels. This choice comes in line with the continuous mobility of Oman airports and its ongoing initiatives as a member of the International Council of Airports in its two regional sections, the Asia-Pacific Council of Airports and its global section, which includes the rest of its five constituent councils in the Canadian capital, Montreal. The Chief Executive Officer of Oman Airports has been appointed to the Board of Directors of the Asia-Pacific Regional Council for 2016 before being selected in 2017 as a member of the Global Board of Directors. This is an affirmation of the Omani presence in this important international forum for its international standing and support for the aerospace industry and the civil aviation sector in the world. The first joint meeting of Arab Water and Agriculture Ministers in Cairo reviewed a future strategy to achieve food and water security in Arab countries. The Sultanate took part in the meeting with an official delegation headed by His Excellency Dr. Fouad bin Jaffa al Sajwani, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries Wealth. The meeting discussed topics related to development po of policies and investments to face the current challenges in addition to future dangers regarding water and food security. The Arab region faces a great challenge in terms of availability of water resources compared to the rest of the world as more than 60% of river water comes from outside in addition to 40% of the people living in areas with water shortages. The ministers also reviewed the Arab Agricultural Development Strategy and the work progress in the Food Security Programme. With a vast participation from Omani riders, the traditional horse festival started in the Walayat of Jala Bani Bu Ali. The event was organised by Al Asayil Club, targeting participants from various places around the Sultanate who came there to showcase their talents in a marvellous traditional show. The festival aims at highlighting the importance of maintaining Omani heritage and their connection to horse riding skills and stunts and connecting such heritage to generations to come. To support the role of cultural and heritage elements in economic growth, the 6th Sada Heritage Festival witnessed a huge participation from the locals who came to showcase their local products and talents. The Women's Association supported the exhibition that included a display of various handmade products and clay works. The evening ceremony, which was organised by the Ministry of Heritage and Culture, attracted local poets who recited and sung their poems. The poetry event was held under the patronage of His Excellency Abdullah bin Ali Al Amri, a Shura Council member. Still to come in our news bulletin. The features from Oman exhibition shed light on development, culture and heritage aspects of the Governorate of Musandam. Why is competition good for businesses? 
Businesses compete in things like price, quality and service to win new customers who could be other businesses as well as consumers. Being competitive can mean more customers choose you rather than your rivals. But when businesses collude and don't compete, this can lower down the quality and service and the consumers paying more than they should. This is an unlawful practice and can stop consumers from getting more options on goods and services with better quality and better prices. That's why the Competition Protection and Monopoly Prevention Law was issued to regulate the freedom of practicing any economic activities and stabilize the principles of the market rules and freedom of pricing in such manner that the same shall not restrict competition, prevent the same or be negatively affected, thereby to benefit consumers, businesses and the national economy. Breaching any of the law's clauses could lead to prison sentences and fines up to 100,000 Omani Reals. The punishment can also include paying 10% of the total annual sales of the products subject of the violation as well as damage to the business's reputation. Help us in preventing anti-competitive activities by contacting the following numbers. And to know more about the law and the prohibited activities, please visit our website www.cmc.om Competition Protection and Monopoly Prevention Center Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo warned of devastating results if Turkey strikes Syria as he met in Washington with Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu. The State Department said after their talks that Pompeo expressed support for ongoing negotiations regarding northeast Syria while warning of the potentially devastating consequences of unilateral Turkish military action in the region. Turkey has repeatedly threatened to hit the Kurdish-dominated Syrian Democratic Forces who joined Western forces in battling the Daesh group, but which Ankara links to the separatist PKK movement at home. Fears for the safety of the fighters has led the United States to delay President Donald Trump's decision to remove U.S. troops from Syria. Kavasoglu was vis visiting Washington as part of the 70th anniversary celebrations for their NATO alliance. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Gang Shuang said today that Chinese President Xi Jinping is looking forward to com continuing communications with US President Donald Trump in all kinds of ways amidst reports of a potential summit between the two leaders. Speaking at a regular news conference in Beijing, Gang also said that trade talks with the US were ongoing. Yesterday, White House economic adviser Larry Kudlow said the talks in Beijing last week made good headway. A date for a morning meeting, a meeting between Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping could be announced soon. Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif said that European powers were incapable of bypassing sanctions imposed on Tehran by the US after it withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal. Iran and six world powers agreed on a deal in 2015 that severely restricted Tehran's nuclear activities in return for sanctions relief and economic incentives. Zarif, who was his country's chief negotiator in the negotiations leading to the deal, said that Iran would continue to pressure the Europeans to act on their obligations within the deal, but added that they never had any hopes in them. Zarif said instead of the Western powers, Iran has turned to its traditional partners such as Russia and China, adding that the future of their foreign policy lies in that way. New Zealand police said today that the man accused of carrying out the Christchurch mosque attacks will face 50 murder charges and 39 attempted murder charges when he makes his second court appearance. Police had earlier filed a single representative murder charge against 28-year-old Australian Brenton Harrison Tarrant, who is due to appear via video link during tomorrow's brief hearing and won't be required to enter a plea. Fifty people died in the 15th of March attacks on two mosques and another 50 were injured. Tarrant's first appearance was on the day after the attacks in the Christchurch District Court. His case has now been moved to the High Court due to the seriousness of the charges. The judge said in a note that the brief hearing would mainly be about the accused gunman's legal representation, 
who has said he wants to represent himself. Many worry that he will try to use his trial as a soapbox to push his white supremacist views. A preliminary investigation report showed that pilots follow correct procedures and regulations before the fatal crash of a Boeing 737 MAX 8 in Ethiopia, killing all 157 people on board. An Ethiopian transport official at a press conference said today that pilots followed all the guidelines and regulations, however they couldn't control the flight. The full report of the investigation into the crash will be released within one year. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 flight ET302 took off at 8.38 a.m. on March 10th from Addis Ababa Boli International Airport and was scheduled to arrive in Nairobi, Kenya at 10.25 a.m. It was out of contact at 8.44 and crashed around Bishoftu town some 45 kilometers from Addis Ababa, killing all 149 passengers and eight crew members aboard. Under the theme Sustainable Lifestyle, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Affairs continues with its awareness campaign that aims at minimising the use of plastic bags. This campaign reached this time the Wilayat of Ibri in Dahira Governorate, where many recreational and promotional programmes took place, urging residents to be responsible towards the environment and select alternative types of bags when shopping. Our Wafa Centre for Children with Special Needs participated in this campaign to share with the community its responsibility in promoting awareness on the responsible use of plastics. The Ministry is currently working on a regulation to regulate the use of plastic in shopping centres and offer environmentally friendly options. More than 100 photos shed light on development, culture and heritage aspects of the Governorate of Musandam in an exhibition entitled Features from Oman, which is organised by the Omani Journalists Association in the Walaya of Kassab. The opening ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Syed Khalifa bin Ahmadas al Busaidi, Governor of Musandam. The photos within the exhibition focus on the beauty of the Omani environment as well as the tourism attractions in the governorates of the Sultanate in addition to historical landmarks and achievements of the Blessed Renaissance under the wise leadership of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over most of the governorates with chances of high and moderate clouds over the northern parts. Low clouds and fog late at night and early morning are expected over the governorates of Sal Shakir and Worcester. Winds will be southeasterly, light to moderate. Seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of one metre.
this is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The Chief Executive Officer of Oman Airports is elected as Vice President of the World Airports Council. The first joint meeting of Arab Water and Agricultural Ministers in Cairo reviews the future strategy to achieve food and water security in Arab countries. And the US Secretary of State warns of devastating consequences of unilateral Turkish military action in northeast Syria. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.